Welcome back. Now, high interest rates and a sluggish economy weighing on the pockets of South Africans have hit Borwin's profits. The property developer has reported a 50% plunge in its annual profit after selling 896 fewer apartments last year. Now, the board's primary focus is to apply capital to reduce the group's debt exposure. And Borwin Property CEO Steve Brooks joins us now with more detail on this performance. Steve, an absolute pleasure as always and a good afternoon to you. Hi, good afternoon to all your viewers and good afternoon to you, Nona Tando. Brilliant. Uh, Steve, let's get right into it here. We have seen a 4% increase in uh, net asset value, but we are seeing other metrics in the red. I'm just keen to uh, get uh, you know, your perspective of how uh, this period played out. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a tough, tough year. Um, high interest rates, consumers that are under enormous pressure, and obviously the political volatility of this new democracy of South Africa. But you know, I think we've got the election coming up on the 29th of May. Let's hope that it's a nice, calm and quiet place. And then hopefully we can start a downward cycle in interest rates. And then we'd like to see, we still believe this year is gonna be incredibly tough. And we're here, we're not going anywhere. And we're resilient, the brand is strong. We are working harder than we've ever worked, um, looking after our clients, and we're hoping that the next year, after February 2025, that we start seeing some back to normality in our business again. Steve, in the past, Gauteng has really dominated Bourne, but we're seeing a bit of a, a shift here. I think a Western Cape really coming through, and also keen maybe to also touch on what we might be seeing uh, in some of the rest of Africa uh, developments uh, there, uh, painting a picture of uh, the various uh, locations. Yeah, you know, us Africans, we love all these catchphrases and all these fancy words. You know, at the moment, the big buzzword going around is semigration. You know, I was a bit cheeky in an interview the other day. I said, Oh, very good. So immigration, are people moving from the Western Cape back to Gauteng? Mm -hmm. And everybody was shaking their heads in amazement. Mm -hmm. But we are seeing a bit of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's immigration, we're strong in the Western Cape. You know, the powerhouse is still Gauteng. You know, um, Johannesburg as a city is a, a world-renowned city. We need a little bit more care and a little bit more diligence on infrastructure. And Pretoria, Tswane is a great node. Again, it needs a bit more infrastructure. But, you know, we've got a nice thing running at the moment with all our agents. We've got it the north versus the south. And the north being Gauteng, Pretoria is actually slightly ahead on our sales this month. So, you know, we're not giving up on Gauteng. I'm a proud, um, I live in this city. I love the Western Cape as well. I love KwaZulu-Natal. All the areas that we work in are, I'm very fond of. But, you know, yes, the Western Cape, they're really getting it together with their infrastructure. And that's what people like to see. Let's talk Baldwin Sports, Steve. A very interesting emergence of this business here. Uh, and, you know, what the expectations are for this business, but also how it is faring at the moment. You know, Baldwin Sport is a great leveler. You know, the, the late Honorable President, Mr. Mandela, was a great sportsman. And it's a great way of bridging the divide in this country. You know, I'm not a great sportsman. I try hard. I don't think I'm ever going to be anything spectacular, but I do love it. It's good for people to do sport, especially in these tough, tough times, get a bit of good energy out there. And, you know, we, we're putting our sport into our Bowen Foundation. Our Bowen Foundation has been remodeled by myself with a very good board, where it's 50% or close to 50% training and 50% sport. We are opening four training facilities in every area we we live sorry where we develop in other words swane pretoria swane johannesburg kwazulu natal in the western cape very modest training centers to train tiling bricklaying plastering the basic skills of what we do and the sport we are really all focusing on cleaning up and helping the industries that we're in in sport, we're in four principal sporting arenas. We're in um, marathon running, which is an easy, very easy barrier to entry. You get a pair of tackies and off you go. Paddle, a little bit tougher to enter, but the latest, fastest sport in the world. Then we've also got our mountain biking and hiking. And then the big one, which the Africans love, which is football. You know, as they say, um, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful game. So we've got all our five-a-side footballs. So, yeah, we're looking at doing a lot with sport. 
It's great for our brand. We've got some fantastic contribution from some big sponsors. So we're looking at developing sport and training through our foundation. Let's all then speak about the balance sheet over this period, Steve. You're keen to get your thoughts on that one, just how we are in terms of, uh, you know, liabilities, but also just looking at the narrative that interest rates could be higher for longer and how that might, may affect a capital allocation. Yeah, look, our balance sheet is strong. Um, our cash flow is resilient. Um, you know, we do, uh, developers often have uh, cycles and they, and they, they often get into trouble because they cash flow. We've got that very carefully watched by our financial director, John Bingham, and Rodney Gray, our managing director, and myself and a big team, watching it like a hawk, very careful with our construction. It doesn't get ahead of ourselves. We've got a large land bank. Um, we believe that we believe in our land bank. As you know, rezoning takes quite a long time. So all our zoning is getting coming into place very smoothly, which we're very, very pleased of through some absolute hard work. And looking forward, it looks good. I'm hoping for a cut in interest rates. Obviously, that makes a massive difference in our business. You know, I'm still I'm still one of the guys hoping for a cut in June. At the end of June, there's the next MPC meeting. If we get a little cut there of a quarter of a percent or heaven forbid half a percent, uh, it will make a big difference in our, in our business. We're not banking on it. We believe in these tough times, sheer hard work, keeping our costs, pulling our belt in. You know, we've all, we've restructured all our executive packages. They've all been trimmed. Um, there are no bonuses at the moment. We are really holding the ship steady and working hard. And before I let you go, uh, Steve, maybe you have touched a little bit on the outlook there in terms of uh, just selling more units. Uh, I think that's a, a one that I'm keen to get uh, some, some thoughts on. The revenue from the sale of apartments, which has essentially been, uh, you know, the biggest contributor to revenue in the past. Uh, you know, are we expecting a recovery uh, in that? Or is that also based on the macros that you've just highlighted for us? Yeah, we're working extremely hard selling our product. You know, we've got some good lifestyles in our product. Sales are 50% down to what they normally are. But we're also looking at increasing our annuity business. You know, the dream of the, of the future is that the annuity business is 20% of our business. And then we want to also start doing more rentals. You know, if you have a balance between rental and selling, then through the different economic cycles, it's a more stable balance sheet. So we are looking at a lot of different avenues in Borwin. The brand is good. The brand is very well recognized and very well liked. And we also are looking at some international expansion. Well, an absolute pleasure having you with us this afternoon. Steve, thank you so much for taking us through the set of numbers. That was Steve Brooks, CEO of 41 Properties.